Hello and welcome to episode number 28 of Theme Park Workshop. My name is Kelly and I'm joined today by Adam Johnson. Hello, it's me. And Bella Harvey. Hey, besties. And today we're going to be talking about how 2023 is really changing the theme park game. In case you guys were uh, gone the last week or so, uh, like I was on a cruise and missed everything, we are here to cover it all. I have been caught up, but let me tell you, it's very weird being gone and not having internet access like the whole week that just everything happened pretty much. So we kept track of it for you guys and we're going to talk about all kinds of things from all the theme parks around here and beyond. To get started, Super Nintendo World. Hello. Has anyone seen the videos of that? Because it looks so cool. And I am so jealous and ready for ours to be here. I want to go there. I know it looks so good, even though it's like only a partial bit of the land. Like Japan has the Yoshi ride and they're going to have the Donkey Kong ride. I'm pretty sure Hollywood is just going to be stuck with Mario Kart, but also all that detail and stuff. Like it, it, it looks so good that, I mean, I don't think I plan on go. I'm planning to go to California anytime soon, but it's also enough to make me think, do, am I impatient enough to just go to California and try? nintendo world and ride mario kart i literally like just went to california in september as y'all know and uh i'm ready to do it again like i'm like i mean how good is halloween horror nights gonna be this year because that could get me to go over there (laughs) i when i saw the super nintendo world stuff I literally, I think I texted in our group chat. I was like, I'm going to do something so insane and drastic that I'm going to end up on national news. Like, I, oh my God, the jealousy and rage that I felt because I wanted to be there so bad because it looked so cute and like all the food looks so cute too. That's what I've seen like a lot of videos of, like people getting everything at the restaurant and it's just really cute. And I don't know how I feel about the ride. Because I've watched ride-throughs of it without the AR headset and someone holding the headset over. And I don't know how I feel about it because, I don't know, but the rest of the land is good. I'm not going to spoil the ride because I know some people don't want to be spoiled. But it's not that good, in my opinion. And it also, hot take number one of the podcast of 2023. I think Universal needs to do a better job at size inclusion for their rides. Agree. I was End of say story. That. Period. Because they can't, most people can't even get on that ride. I was, okay, so we're gonna, I'm not trying to transition over to Disney yet. Um, we'll get to this ride. I'm curious how Tron is going to be, because I was just about to say that for the most part, oh, do you know this? Because for the most part, Disney is pretty good about size inclusion, except for Flight of Passage. Not always, but. Yeah, there I saw a train that has modified cars. That are like normal oh. seats. So I'm sure oh. like, I'm sure you could ask to ride in one of those if they're not already being used by someone who needs them at that moment. But it was really cool to see. I'll have to find the picture and send it to you guys. But I saw it somewhere and they're going to have modified seats. So it made me okay, less I love that. nervous for Tron. That's good because I know that like, like I love the seat and this is like, I, I don't have any issues with sizing or anything on seats but I love the seats in general on Cosmic Rewind like they are so comfortable I have family members that have struggled at Universal and friends that have struggled at Universal that don't have very many issues at Disney and Cosmic Rewind is a great example of that we had someone go on it with us that had like a lot of mobility issues and had no problem getting in and out of the seats so Disney for the most part is doing a great job about that I was nervous about Tron but I'm very glad to hear that um but yeah I really think that I've seen a lot of videos about everything with that ride at Universal Hollywood. And I'm like, that makes me upset. Yeah, it kind of like, it dampened the excitement once I realized that. And like, I don't know, but it's still a really cool land. I wish people weren't complaining about it in the sight lines that don't matter once you're on the ground because you can't tell. But, you know, theme park culture is theme park culture. And, People are going to find something in there to complain about. Adam, 
Yeah, like I, I agree with the sight lines. I never really think about sight lines in like a serious way. Um, the only the first time I actually noticed like uh, Forbidden Journey has some sight line things. Like I know some people are like, oh, this the the force perspective doesn't work at a certain point. But I'd never thought about that or thought about the fact you can see the white show building um, behind Forbidden Journey or that Forbidden Journey is in behind the castle. Never really think about the fact that I can see Rip Ride Rocket from Seuss Landing. Oh, the humanity! I didn't think about that until we had our Balthazar Banshee character on on Theme Park Workshop. If you go back to previous episodes, you can see his wonderful. Uh, well, yeah, wonderful is a strong word. Um, his takes, his his hot takes, but you know, writing for that character and trying to make fun of Theme Park Workshop or Theme Park culture. Uh, that's when I'm like, oh yeah, I guess that is a thing. That is a thing. That is a thing. But yeah, going back to the size inclusion, Hollywood, Universal Hollywood has been very strange with its uh, sizes. Like Secret Life of Pets, it's a slow moving ride and has the issues. Um, obviously Mario Kart's a slow moving ride and it has the size issues. And I understand why size issues exist to it, not with Universal because Universal seems really restrictive. Like Iron Gwazi, I understand like, in order to have that freedom like of movement and stuff it's got to be more restrictive so you know things work a certain way um but i mean like cheetah hunt like i'm 190 ish like well like 195 right now and i really hate going on cheetah hunt because it's a very restrictive see and that's a bush gardens problem but it just it's a widespread issue is what i'm trying to get at and universal is doing it with like kid rides and family rides, really. Yes. Well, uh, I was actually about to say, um, I was just saying that I, I don't normally have issues, of, but like Tigress is mm. another one at, at um, Bush Gardens that like, I have like bigger thighs and legs and I have trouble getting in and out of that. I, I don't know. Like there's, I, I, there, but that's another one that I get it. Like it's a very, it's an intensive ride and it like turns like certain ways. And I get that there's certain rides. Same with, I understand why flight of passage is the way it is because they have to make sure you're safe. And it's like kind of the way the vehicles are set up, but like something like, like a slow moving ride like that, or a, um, like a non-intensive roller coaster, like the kind that Disney has and things like that. Like there's just like certain rides at universal that I just don't understand that are, they could have better seats or like more inclusive options. So it's just frustrating that they don't have more of that, but I could rant about that all day. <laughs> no, same. And one more thing before we go on to the next topic. I did not mean to derail, um, but it also, it's frustrating for people that are like over like almost six foot or taller because their legs are too long. So it doesn't, it doesn't work. And if you have big thighs, it doesn't work. Like, I don't know. I hopefully for 2023 and with Epic Universe opening 2025, we see some better inclusion that way. Anyway, <laughs> done with that topic. <laughs> okay, probably the topic that I'm most excited about, though, is speaking of Universal, how about that Universal Vegas all year horror experience? <laughs> yeah, that, oh announcement, that announcement really came out of nowhere. Like that, I think, was well, that and the Frisco Park, uh, Frisco, Texas family park announcement, like those two back to back. It started with like, oh, hey, Josh tomorrow is here saving the day. Everything's going to be okay. We're going back to the things you love and things that you love are coming back. Isn't that great? It's like, okay, Josh, thank you. Thank you for this good news. We'll go on like normal. And then Universal's like, oh, by the way, we're opening two brand new theme parks that apparently very few people even rumored about. Uh, That was insane. That was massive. And I love that horror is part of it. Oh, and just the fact that like we got the concept art for both of them the frisco park looks beautiful it's very like bright and colorful i like that it's all dreamworks centered hopefully we get trek swamp i see some places where i think that's what it is but for the horror vegas thing that they have like chance and jack in the concept art and it's just like even though chance looked like a grown-up not chance jack looks like a grown-up dobby it's fine and like, <laughs> I saw so many people talking about that. And I was glad to know that I wasn't the only one that thought that. That's so funny. Um, No, but that made me so happy seeing them in the concept art. Like I, like it made me very helpful for it too, because if they would have just been like, yeah, that's going to be an all year horror experience. Stay tuned with like no concept art or like, you know, very minimal. I would have been like, 
that's amazing. But I would have been like, mm, okay, kind of like tepid about it and not sure. But the fact that they had icons in like the concept art tells me that they're like making this like a labor of love for like the huge HHN fans. And I am stoked because I've been wanting to go to Vegas, but I'm not like a big, like, like I'm not a gambler. So like I, you know, I'll go to casinos for the ambiance and everything. And I want to like go to Vegas and try all those cool things. But like area 15 where it's going is like a really cool area and they've got cool stuff there and somewhere I want to go. And I'm excited because as the longtime listeners know, my husband does not do horror. So I was like, great. You have a friend who lives over in Vegas that loves horror. Let's go with her. And then you can go gamble. It's perfect. 10 out of 10 trip right there compromises compromises (laughs) I don't know I I don't know what to expect because like you said if they didn't have any like concept art and like actual stuff attached with it it would kind of felt like you know the walking dead walkthrough that was a universal yes where it was just like but I don't know I'm excited because like one year-round horror nights two the icons and I feel like they can have more freedom maybe like with ideas and what they want to do in space they're not constricted to a tent or a smaller sound stage like they can literally do whatever they want I don't know I think it's gonna be really awesome I hope we all make a trip out there together and cover it absolutely I want to go as soon as it opens <laughs> yeah me too I I wonder if it's going to be just like haunt style like is it just going to be like Five scary zones, ten houses. That's a lot of live actors. Um, and of course, food. Gotta have the food. Or is it going to have like an attraction or two? I know it's one of the smaller parks, but I, I'm pretty sure the Universal Family Park, that's just why I'm called. I don't know what it's officially called. Um, but that's going to have rides. Even if they're not like huge rides, there will be rides there. Just looking at the concept art. Um, like there's a boat that goes around all over the place. But with, with HHN World or whatever they're calling it, um, all we have is the entrance with the vines and the the Universal logo and Jack and Chance, which asks a lot of questions. And I'm excited anyway, but it's also the one that I'm not sure if it's going to last the longest. Like, is it only going to be in its prime its first year? Because I'd expect there to be a lot of live action, like live actor elements. And if we know anything from the Hollywood uh, Forever Haunt, the Perma Haunt, when it was there, there were days where there'd be like, one actor in the entire thing and it was only in one section the rest was i hope you like scary props not that i ever did it but just like seeing videos you can see some videos where there's like no one there so i i and horror is more niche like of course like we there are people like us who love horror and we'll go to universal halloween horror nights get the frequent fear and we like live for it that then but then you also have uh when uh you know there are the COVID restrictions going on and we couldn't have the 2020 version of hhn 30 we had to wait until 2021 for that they opened tooth fairy and they opened brighter frankenstein lives and beetlejuice for that one time but most of the time even though they were open all day is usually five minutes which is great for people like us who would go do it and do it again and again and again but that's not what everyone was interested in when they came to um came to universal in the day Granted, with all of the it was smaller attendance, but even so. So I hope I hope it's super successful. I hope it sticks around. And I'm sure they've like calculated all the possibilities and they're not treating this like a fifth gate or something like that. And they're like, being reasonable. Um, but the lore nerd in me is also excited for like how much you're going to be able to uncover and dig up. Like, is there going to be like a Shady Brook, you know, whatever are we going to get old houses returning uh like dollhouse of the damned or tomb of the ancients or some of your other favorites uh, or is it going to be all new houses are they going to cycle houses if they're doing houses that's the thing we don't know much but when we know that little taste that'll nibble i'm excited i hope it comes sooner rather than later yeah i'm definitely just interested to see if it's something that they're going to like change out haunts or if it's going to be more consistent i don't know but i am pumped for it i'm much more excited for that than the family haunt just because it doesn't apply to me as much but i think it'll be a cool place to go with like my nieces and nephews and things like that it looks like a cool idea it looks beautiful and i was also just having a conversation the other day with you know some friends of mine and we were talking about how of course the orlando theme parks get so mobbed is because like there's not really anything central that's like a big theme park like that so i feel like putting something in texas is like 
a good place for a theme park to get more people from the middle there, like to have somewhere to go that's closer. So especially like families, like I think that's a really cool area for it and a cool idea. So I'm definitely excited to learn more about both of these and I think it's going to be neat. It's going to be so cool. Another thing that happened, Kids Zone is gone. RIP Kids Zone. But they've been teasing DreamWorks stuff. And that really excites me because they have Megamind on the walls and they have Captain Underpants. And I need to know why. I was and so I love excited. It. I love that I saw Megamind because I saw a video of it and I saw, I was like, oh my God, Captain Underpants. And they have like all of these like different like um, characters shown and a lot of them were like not like super represented characters and then I saw Megamind at the end of the video and I screamed I was like yeah I just showed Megamind to Kevin the other day and he, it's so good we need a Megamind walk around character like we need one we need it like I'll imagine if he, it, like him grew Vector that's all we need Take away every other person. Maybe not. Have a set time where the three of them meet together. And it would be the greatest thing to ever happen. It'd be like Multiverse of Madness. It would be Endgame. It would be (laughs) Spider-Man No Way Home. It would be fantastic. But I don't... I never really went to Kid Zone. I just went to ride E.T., go see SpongeBob. I went to DreamWorks Destination once. But I never... Oh, well, I guess I'd go back there for Horror Nights to see, you know, Curious George with the pole. You know? <laughs> R.I.P. to a legend. Gone too soon. Um, if you know, you know. Yeah, if if you know, you know. Um, but I don't know. I'm kind of okay with Kids Zone Gone. I know some people have been, like, distraught over it. But I had no connection, no ties. So I'm like, bring on the Mega Megamind. <laughs> I, I grew up with kid zone in a way like woody woodpecker's nuthouse coaster i thought it was like one of the best kid coasters uh that and the wily e, uh, coyote one over in six flags over georgia uh those were both great but i mean nuthouse coaster i did a bunch but never did five was playland never did that water slide didn't do the curious george ball pit or splash around in there because it wet and barney didn't do dreamworks destination didn't ever do and it's two or three years that it existed so i am excited to see the new blood get in and you were talking about like the end game and all those dreamworks characters it feels like because i went up i did et of course uh on saturday and seeing all those dreamworks characters at once it does feel like an end game moment even though it's just posters because it's like everyone is here or like smash brothers ultimate when they came out with that trailer it's like everyone is here it felt like that the only people who were missing were like you know, Prince of Egypt, Moses, and uh, Joseph, King of Dreams, and Woody Allen, Ant, for obvious reasons. Like, I guess Shark Tale was gone. So, rest, rest in peace, Shark, Shark Tale. Tale. I-, I love Shark Tale. I was just talking about it last night. It's so good. We need representation. <laughs> uh, but you have all the Madagascar characters. You got Mr. Peabody and Sherman? That's wild. Uh, you have the dragons. The dragons have a cutout. You even have new characters like Perito from uh, Puss and Boots, The Last Wish. You have the bad guys, which bad guys is really great. I'm going to keep on saying that. It's a great movie. And like, yeah, even these at uh, home, home had representation on the wall. Abominable was on there. I don't know if Zendaya is still Michi, <laughs> but Abominable is still there. Great, great <laughs> reference there. I love home that movie was so cute i haven't seen abominable i never saw it oh, home is so cute we need to have like a dreamworks night apparently because i never saw bad guys i didn't either it's on netflix Ooh, yeah tempting it's it's like it's like oceans 11 and tarantino for kids i love that it's a heist movie with a lot of like tarantino style dialogue Delivered by, I forget the actor's name, Justin Hammer from Iron Man 2, but he sounds like George Clooney. So, <laughs> and there's animals. That's so fun. And it's done like right. Spider Verse, it's Spider Verse style, Puss in Boots style. Like, it's really fun. Well, I'm going to be borrowing the nieces and nephews and be like, all right, we're watching a heist movie, kids. <laughs> no, I want to watch it now. I'm going to watch it. <laughs> but yeah, definitely excited. I don't know if the rides will be for me. As far as I know, it's just going to be a reskin of everything that's in Kid Zone. Like maybe Woody Woodpecker is going to be the Trolls Coaster. I know Alicia Stella has actually talked about it, but I haven't like listened to it. So sorry for not getting that information out there, friends. But um, 
yeah, maybe it's going to be a Trolls coaster, but it's just going to be Nut House coaster all over again. Maybe we're still going to have a playground, but it'll be like Mega Mind's Lair or, or the Bad Guys. What you might have it? Uh, what's a what's like a building from a dream? Shrek movie? Swamp. Shrek, Shrek Swamp. Swamp the ride. Yes. <laughs> Actually, build I'll it cry. out. Make. Dreamworks destination more permanent. Um, oh my god! May, that, for all I know, that's all it could be. But who is to know? I mean, Universal knows, and people who know know. But I don't know, and I want to know. I'm super excited. I also, I know, like, not to spoil anything for anyone who hasn't seen Mega Mind, but I know he's not like really a villain. I mean, he's a villain. Well, I, you know, he's misunderstood. I he's misunderstood. <laughs> but I love any kind of villain rep, like villains especially like misunderstood villains have my heart i think they're so fun like if we got a mega mind like lair i would i would love that i want it so bad i need it there's a new peacock show coming out for mega mind i just remembered <gasps> you're lying no are you lying no i forget what it's called it might be the adventures of mega mind this is like the year of like revamps because that's coming. Phineas and Ferb two seasons, like. Uh, nah. Well, I think Universal's also like Universal, the film company, is testing out the because they just acquired uh, DreamWorks in 2018, 2019. Their first movie was How to Train Your Dragon three, and ever since then they've been inter- introducing like a few new IPs, like the bad guys. Uh, but they've also been testing out Spirit. They've tested out Puss in Boots. They've tested out. Uh, trolls just to see like okay we're spending a lot of you were spending a lot of money on every concept let's spend less money and see if these concepts these characters are still relevant so it's a really interesting audit process that's going on so maybe we won't get Mega Mind 2 but maybe peacock will really benefit from having a Mega Mind show because all of the people who are nostalgic for it grew up with that movie maybe then they'll subscribe to peacock and then more people will get interested in Mega Mind and more people will go to universal studios Orlando to experience Mega Mind, you know, in the flesh and all of these things. So if it turns out great for Universal, it's going to turn out great for DreamWorks and maybe we get like the golden era of of DreamWorks post Shrek 2. <laughs> or post Dragons. I a lot of people love Dragons and Mega Mind and stuff. We can uh we can like have all the DreamWorks movies there except Shrek the 3rd. All of them except Shrek the 3rd and Shrek Forever After. And that one, and anyone that had the babies in it, because they terrify me. Sorry to the Shrek babies, but Shrek the you're ugly. Good. Shrek the Halls is very good. It's very good. It is. I've seen Shrek the Halls. I've seen the Halloween specials. But listen, if it's not Shrek or one or two, as far as the full size movies go, I don't want it. Those two are elite. Hey, you know what died today? <laughs> Splash Mountain's dead. Yeah. yeah. I really, I only did it one no. time, and the ending was broken when I did it. So, I really have no attachment to Splash Mountain. The only attachment to Splash Mountain I really have, I know, fake theme park fan, is I love the bit of trivia that the reason it's called Splash Mountain instead of Zippity Doodah Run or Zippity River Run is because Michael Eisner's like, hey, we got this Tom Hanks movie coming out called Splash. What if we promoted that by calling it Splash Mountain? So rest in peace to the Tom Hanks, Daryl Hannah movie. I'm sorry you no longer have theme park representation. But I know a lot of people love the, the story structure and they grew attached to the characters outside of the context of the very, very bad and problematic film, Song of the South. Um, but again, we're excited to see it move on. I was actually talking today to my um brother-in-law about this ride and he was like yeah i thought the characters were cool like i know that the movie is not great but at least the ride's all right and i was like you know what the plot of the the movie is right and we kind of like talked to them a little bit about how that's represented in the ride and he was like no i did not know that and i was like yeah it's not great so as much as like you know the obviously the song is very fun and it's like I, I like a heavy animatronic ride. Like I like the old school style of like heavy animatronics in my perfect world. That's exactly how the new ride would be with like obviously updated animatronics. But you know, I went on it uh, yesterday, the day before it closed and I did a lightning lane for it because I ain't waiting three hours for Splash Mountain. 
I just kind of did it on a whim with people who haven't been on it on in years. And uh, it's fine. I like the drops. I'm hoping that those stay because to me, that's the best part of the ride. The theming's all right because it feels like classic Disney, but there's other places that you can get that besides that ride. And uh, I'm super excited for Tiana's Bayou Adventure. I think it's going to be great. I hope it's great. If they're listening, Disney, I know you're listening to our episodes. Uh, please do a better job than you did with Frozen Ever After. Sorry to be a hater, but like put more effort into it because I want this ride to be beautiful. But I'm not mourning Splash Mountain. It is fine. Goodbye. <laughs> I have one thing to say for Splash Mountain. Let it die. Let it die. Let it triple up and die. Listen. Listen. I've ridden Splash Mountain twice. Twice! Because I hate water rides and I hate log rides. And drops. Hate it. I cried seven times. Both times I've ridden it. I've cri- I cried seven times. I counted. And I just... I, I'm going to face my fear for Tiana because I would give my life for her. But I don't understand. Like, yeah, childhood nostalgia. I'll be respectful. But I don't understand the wearing all black and standing out front of Splash Mountain morning. I don't understand the morning TikToks. I don't understand the shrine. I don't understand the four-hour wait times. Like, I don't get it. I don't get it. Y'all are crazy, but teach their own. I do have nostalgia for it. I have great stories of, like, rides that I went on with my mom and things like that. I loved that ride as a kid don't really care that it's going away it's I mean, I'm also not a water ride person well I take that back I like water rides if I'm prepared to go on a water ride like I'm wearing a swimsuit or something but I don't like getting wet in the middle of my theme park day and also like here's a fun hot take if you want to go on a great log flume style ride with outdated awesome nostalgic animatronics just go to Universal like 15 minutes away and go on Ripsaw Falls, which is a fantastic ride. And also the, oh, Adam does not like, you don't like Ripsaw Falls? It hurts my belly. Oh, okay. That, you know what? That's fair. That that <laughs> part is fair. But it's a fun ride though. Like I like the theming of it. Very classic. And I also love the Bilge Rat Barge, but like Splash Mountain uh, it's fine there's apparently it's in one of the international parks i can't remember which one tokyo tokyo just go to tokyo just kidding that's very expensive i wish i could just, just hop a plane just hop <laughs> hop on a plane and go to tokyo just like do it just go do for it. splash mountain forget tokyo <laughs> disney sea for, yeah go right splash mountain it's all you it's all you need to experience tokyo disney just yeah flights are so cheap i've totally looked it's definitely so doable for everyone <laughs> starts crying um i want to go to tokyo that's another episode anyway flash mountain mm, uh, my only fear is that i want them to do my girl tiana right because she deserves it and i'm excited but slightly nervous but i really hope it's really good because the concept art is beautiful yeah i'm still mad that they took away the boat out of the tree mama odie's boat was gonna be up on top of the tree and now it's gone but also hot take number two of the episode they i am a a defender of pecos bills i love pecos bills but they need i want them to change it to tiana's restaurant like how they do the how how they're doing in disneyland like i need it but like i love pecos so i don't know if i want to part with pecos but also but also there's like a bunch of other random restaurants that are around there that you could take out like, what's that one? It's, like, next to Pecos. It's, like, it, it has, like, weird sandwiches. Is it the Golden Horseshoe? No, but that can go. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I. It's on the other side. It's, like, outdoors, and it's by Pirates. Couldn't tell you. Tortuga, Tortuga Tavern. Boom. Brain power. Tortuga Tavern. That could go, because it's kind of close. And but it's I don't know. Unused. Like I feel like they don't it's like never utilize open. it much. No, yeah. it's never open. Also, they have those walking tacos, which might be a temporary thing. Um, and like they have nachos and like things that they could very easily have at like a booth nearby, like like where Golden Horseshoe is and everything. Like they could just have like a lot of that stuff sold at a booth. Maybe not fajitas, but like the tacos and nachos and stuff. 
ever since they took away the salad bar topping bar thing at Pecos since COVID, it hasn't hit the same. Correct. So I feel like I'd be okay with it going, but at least bring the toppings bar back for like a day just so like we could go and get it. And then they can they can get rid of it and I'd be happy with that. Evie to when I was in college and I was poor and I would just get a little cup of <laughs> toppings for free. <laughs> anyone else I did that I did that so many times I would just get a little oh. cup of like sour cream cheese and lettuce and be like this is my salad <laughs> yes I did it all the time it was great my friend was like do you want to know a hack and I was like yeah and I was already you know like doing the thing where you get a cup from anywhere else and you take it to harbor house and you can get a refill <laughs> like I was already doing that and we just we just made little topping salads and it was great it was amazing. Bring it back just for that. <laughs> so speaking of quick service, actually Peco spilled that Southwestern and so is Cafe La Bamba over at Universal Studios. Little food review, little quickie, quickie food review. So I was actually initially hyped, not super hyped, but hyped enough to be like, oh, interesting. Because like Cafe La Bamba is usually seasonal. All of a sudden now it's not it's open and it's for everybody it's not just for private events and it's got some growing pains friends uh so what they sell are if you have a choice of proteins you can do vegan you can do pollo asado you can do carne asada you can do uh paja shrimp and what's the fifth food group chicken shrimp beef pork mojo pork you could you can choose amongst those five uh, you could do a bowl, you could do a salad, you can do a burrito, you can do three tacos. They also have some desserts. And they cost about $16 for that. And if you don't get a bowl, a bag of chips, or like not a bag of chips, <laughs> if only, it, like a little side of chips. Uh, you can also order queso, you can order salsa. They have a salsa flight, which I didn't get, but it sounds like it could be good. Actually, this whole concept sounds like it could be good, but... Uh, ooh. So I'll just start with my biggest complaint, which is the service. I don't know what's up because it's a mobile order only situation. You have to mobile order because it's not a large venue. In most places, mobile order is an added convenience. It's so the kitchen sees, hey, here's what's coming up. And then you show up, you hit the button. It's also a way for you to stay connected to the universal app if you want to buy other things on there. But you expect if it's mobile order, it'll be ready soon. And you expect if we got Moe's and City Walk and we've got Bumblebee Man's Tacos over, gosh, it's like five, not even a five minute walk over, that this will still be quick. But it's, we waited like a half hour, if not more, for a bowl, a burrito, and tacos. And then we did have to make a second order, but they treat it as like a completely separate order, completely separate table, um, because they have a kid's menu on the menu, but not on the selections. You can't select the kids menu options. It is on the app and the menu, but it's not, you can't buy it. it. They just aren't selling it. You also can't make any modifications unless you've got an allergy. Because why? I don't know. Maybe it's because it it came out of nowhere. Maybe it came out of nowhere for Universal. It's like, we need to get this up. And so you have to communicate with the apps team. You have to communicate with the kitchen and all of these, these teams. And maybe there's just gonna be like a breakdown in communication and they said, for sake of ease, we're not going to let you make modifications because um, one of my friends, she doesn't do onions and onions are in the pico. So you'd have to, so she would have to say, hi, I would like the pico off of this so I don't experience onions. And they said, we cannot make a modification. The only way you can make a modification is if you cheat the system and say, I have an allergy. Hit the allergy button in the app, say, I'm allergic to onions. Can we just, and then someone will come out and be like, hi, we really care about your allergies. Tell us what you need and we'll we'll prepare that, you know, uniquely, separately. But that shouldn't be the case. That shouldn't be the case. And it would be, I think we could overlook it if the food, you know, it takes, it took a half hour, if not more, um, to, to do that, which is really, I mean, it's kind of unacceptable for a quick service or a casual service when Mythos and Confisco treat you like you have to be out within the hour. Cafe La Bamba, I mean, the, the guy who did serve us, Zach, uh, you will fist bump to Zach because he did walk us through like, hey, you know, for next time you can do this, but he really felt like his hands were tied, like he could, couldn't do 
much about the situation because it's new and because there's the app restrictions and they've got their their whole thing. Um, but yeah, it, it shouldn't. So yeah, wait half hour. You can't make modifications. If the food was good, if it was exceptional, if it was great, then I think we would overlook it and say, hey, you know, they just are getting used to it. But the food came and it was barely warm. It was barely warm. My bowl, like the chicken, the, the shrimp that I got wasn't cold, but it was whatever. And the guac, it wasn't hot. The salsa, the rice, the beans, it felt like it was under the lamp for the past 15 minutes and like they forgot about us is what it felt like. Which, is that the case? I don't know. I'm not in the kitchen, but there were like eight chefs scooping things like they're in Chipotle and there's one head chef overlooking the whole thing, kind of like nodding and, you know, overseeing the whole thing. Like, you can't see me, so I can't describe it, but, you know, like a, a mastermind or an overlord. And you you have to wonder what is happening back there that this food comes back not warm. But you're not going to complain because you waited 30 to 45 minutes for this food. So I hope Cafe La Bamba experiences like growth. I hope they, you know, kick back from this and it's a go-to destination for your quick service $16 burritos. But right now, get out of the park, go to Moe's or walk over to Bumblebee Man's Tacos for a okay to good taco, but a great deal because you get chips for like $11.99. That's all you need. Um, but I will say the dessert was good. The dessert that we got, um, it was like a, pound cake with marshmallows and strawberries and some cinnamon powder i'm not gonna say it's worth the wait but it was worth having so there's that that's my little coffee la bamba review hopefully they get better but i do not plan to go again two out of ten for me that is interesting that's like i've never heard anyone ever say that about any quick service or restaurant in any theme park that's so weird i did see in tim tracker's video there's the mention for the episode that you like sk- like you do it on the app and then you scan the table and then they bring it yeah. to you we could call so, does something similar yeah yeah so maybe that's why it's mobile order only as of now maybe they'll open it up to yeah. more things but the stuff about the allergies and like no modifications that's crazy and that's so unlike universal it's weird I don't know. I definitely want to like try it if I have an extra three hours <laughs> to wait <laughs> instead of waiting for Splash Mountain. I'll just go wait at Cafe La Bamba. Um, I don't know. That's crazy. That's weird. That's wild. I would. I mean, I I totally understand if you want to try. It. That's what our case was. Like the t- menu didn't seem exceptional to me, but it seemed worth trying because if you go to Universal a lot, Cafe La Bamba's in the corner. You wonder what's going on with Cafe La Bamba. Same with Wimpy's. It's like when. Is Wimpy ever open? Is it just going to stand there and we're just going to pretend it's not there? Or Green Eggs and Ham for the longest time? It was literally just a giant ham hock with a fork in it. And no one talked about it. It was like, what's happening there? It used to be open, but now it's not. But they haven't gotten rid of it. What's happening? That was kind of like, Cafe La Bamba was like the non-IP version of that. Um, and like, we all regretted it, but we didn't blame anyone. Because how can you know, you know? For sure. Well, I... I'm a Bumble Man's Tacos apologist. So I think that's a good place to go if you're just trying to get sustenance during the day. I've never been there before. I've never tried it, but it always smells really good when I walk by. So it's, t- it's, it's pretty tempting. Good. Yeah, yeah I liked it more back in the day when they had three tacos and more options. Like at a Korean beef taco, now they longer, oh. no longer have that. It's just like pork taco, chicken taco, steak taco is all they got right now. So I was a little bummed. I think it used to be three. Now it's two. Yeah, now it's two and some chips. I think they bumped up the price and they don't have the nachos anymore. So like, I have my complaints about Bumblebee Man's tacos now when I didn't before, but it's still like, it gets the job done. You know, I don't feel cheated out of Bumblebee Man's. It does, but I will mourn those Asian Korean beef tacos forever. They were so delicious, but yeah, those were the best because they had like radishes on them and they were just very perfect Korean barbecue flavor. But anyway um i have no transition but speaking of things that i love and miss (laughs) does that work um i am so excited because april 3rd comes my dreams come true again and happily ever after is back and epcot forever is back i saw epcot forever once and it's it's very fun i like it but i don't always stay for the epcot fireworks they're cool and i like that you can kind of watch them from anywhere and i love like I love Epcot, so I think Epcot Forever is cool. 
but happily ever after. I am not brave enough to go in the first month, I don't think, because <laughs> I don't do crowds well. So like, or like at least like firework kind of crowds like that where it's like crazy. Honestly, maybe I'll just ball out and do like the dessert party or something like not the first month but like I don't know over the summer or something but yeah I'm super excited because the music is beautiful even if I was just walking around Magic Kingdom and I heard the music playing I would probably start crying especially out there that is my favorite song in the whole thing and the Love is an open door, and oh god, it's just so good. The lanterns, the lanterns, it's so beautiful. Rest in peace, harmonious on uh, April 2nd. Don't That's... talk to me about that. I'm gonna be so sad because I am one no. of the few crazy enough to be there all three days. Um, I have reservations for the second, third, and fourth. Um, Look at you. I wish I was those. Different got we got my friends and I got those the second all those announcements came out and I'm not ready to mourn harmonious because I think it's one of the greatest things that Disney has done recently and I'm very shocked that they're taking it away like after so how soon. much they spent on those barges and they're just not gonna use them anymore I think um, that's crazy and it's a great show and also like I know people were complaining about the way the barges looked now that they're like lit up and they like do cool things like during the day like with the you know they look nice I think it looks nice it looks fine mm -hmm. and um I have no problems with that and then the show is fantastic like we watched it one night and we're not like always huge firework people but I was like that is a great show I can't believe they're getting like what are they doing with the barges kind of put them in Bay Lake I don't know <laughs> yeah, they're, they're probably going the way that the Illuminations Globe went and it's just going to be torn asunder in some yeah backstage area or taken to the dump i don't i don't know i mean it, are... it sucks because like the same thing happened with fast pass plus it cost a billion mm -hmm. dollars to implement that system and you know what we have now not fast pass plus we have lightning lane and genie yeah. plus yeah it's i don't think the budget was reallocated no <laughs> it's not like you reinvest you're like investing the same cash yeah it's just into the ether now yeah but, but i mean they have they have no shortage of money as as they say yeah but harmonious like the the finale with someday and just like i'm gonna cry talking about it i'm so sad it's going away but halfway over after i'm gonna turn into the joker when i hear that again because i was there for the day it came back from covid i sat for seven hours on main street in my spot and then the day it left probably 12 or 13 i got there and we got our spot and i didn't move all day it was worth it but i'm gonna turn to the joker i'm gonna go crazy but the fourth the next day just a big weekend of things is when tron opens and I'm... oh god yeah the next oh, day i didn't even think about yeah. that yeah so nice. that'll be fun i'll be there but it's if it's anything like how splash is today for a ride that's been there forever and this is a ride like what 200 years in the making because it's taken that long i don't know i think it's gonna be interesting i'll be there i will report back on how scary it is but i don't know we'll see i'm excited r.i.p harmonious gone too soon living legend i was at magic kingdom this weekend and i got to do the railroad for the first time in who knows how long it was amazing it was so cute it's such an easy way to like travel from the lands too. Like I did not remember how the railroad worked. So that was cool. And then, um, you know, you pass by Tron, which is neat. So it was just really neat. And uh, we also went on the People Mover, best ride at Magic Kingdom, obviously, until Tron opens at least. And um, we were passing by and we got to see there was someone testing it presumably a cast member I guess um Imagineer maybe but they were like on like the back row of the the ride and we saw them like on it and I was like that's so cool so it looks really neat the ride vehicles look really cool I'm excited I looked up the modified seating when we were looking at that uh, talking about that earlier and that looks really cool too so I'm just super excited about this ride um, and I did a poll on our Instagram story and everyone said they were excited. And I was like, oh, good. I'm glad the hype hasn't worn off, at least within, you know, the people around us. So 
I'm excited. And uh, yeah, it looks really cool. I am waiting for these pass holder preview emails because I really want to be able to do a preview. I would assume it would be in like late February, early March or, you know, anytime in March. So hopefully it's not when my godson is being born. <laughs> it should be. We should be probably getting them soonish because I know cast members got theirs um, oh, or I someone know I know that. got theirs. Um, so hopefully we hear soon. Hopefully. I am going to jump back over to Universe. Oh, unless, Adam, do you have stuff to say about Tron? Yeah, I was just going to say, like, I definitely have a lot of catching up to do with Magic Kingdom because, I mean, Happy Ever After I really want to do again as well because I think I've said this before on the show, it's the first nighttime show that I connected with personally. Like, I was out there, obviously. Like, I was just moved by it. And I, it might be because my family never did nighttime shows because we were all like, eh, beat the traffic. Or don't stay until 10 this is best um that could be it um but then i did it um with with friends of mine and it was wonderful so i'm excited to do that i've never done the real way because when i was going to disney quite a few times it wasn't open or i would forget about it because who thinks it'd be closed for five years and of course tron looking forward to that um yeah it's gonna be it's it's gonna be a good time when i go to the magic kingdom again and haunted mansion when was the last time i did haunted mansion probably before no, it wasn't before COVID. It was like maybe 2021. But I feel like it's been it's been a bit. I need to go again. It's been two years. This is not new news, but the hat box ghost, Adam. Oh yeah. You gotta go when that's there. Oh, but also like sooner than that, we've got to do a podcast trip to Magic Kingdom, yes. I think. Absolutely. Um, really quick about Epcot before we jump back over to Universal. Listen, I think my friend said it best the other day on her Instagram when she said, anyone who's upset about the Epcot parking signs needs to touch grass. <laughs> because Literally. They, they are so cute. <laughs> they it, are. Like the old signs were just, if I remember correctly, they were just like a letter, right? And it was like, yeah, imagine. It was hard to, should. it was hard to figure out where you were. The yes. Make, I saw someone point out that it's going to be easier for a non-English speaking guest because like they can just they know the characters so it'll help it'll be nice that is so true i didn't even think about that that's like so smart i was thinking that it's easier for me to remember where i parked because i'm like was it an i or an a i don't know so this is great and like imagination creation whatever they were they all sounded similar inspire i don't know someone's gonna be listening to this and be like those are not any of those correct kelly please um but the characters are really cute i wish they had remy as one of them is my only complaint because i'm like where's my boy remy he would be very cute um but i love that they have even wally because those are like wally's like one of my favorite disney movies to ever be created i could talk about that for hours but the signs are cute it's a fun idea like i think all of the other parks at this point are utilizing characters for their signs it just makes sense and I don't know why people were so upset about them, but go check them out yourself. They're adorable. And if you're mad about them, don't be mad about them. There are so many other things to be mad about in the Disney parks. <laughs> Animal Kingdom's next on the chopping block. Dude. <laughs> they still got their weird signs. They, they're next. Oh, that's what you mean. Dude, I thought you were... <laughs> And the park. The park was going down and i'm like hey though so that I would be a star. i like avatar i saw oh. it in imax no i actually saw it in dolby never mind but still i saw it i don't want dinosaur to die it's gonna i don't want it to we can't talk I'll about be, that again i'll be like that one guy in the panel that we talked about that stood up and started <laughs> booing when they mentioned dinosaur going away that will be all of us collectively it's gonna be my joker you're right they do still have their weird signs because i was thinking that hollywood has made them characters now animal kingdom use some cute animal characters come on get with the program it makes me go park in unicorn like no give me like something fun like i want to go park in like jake sully like come on <laughs> i want to park in I jake never even seen avatar i just thought that was funny I'm giving myself a pat on the back for that one thank you very much <laughs> That was good. That was good. See, I was thinking like, I don't know why I thought of the good dinosaur. I don't even know his name. Harold Harlow movie. 27. <laughs> his name is Arlo, I think. Not a good movie, him. but I remember that for some reason. Because characters are universal. I mean, I mean magical. <laughs> Speaking of universal. 
Well, actually, before we go on to Universal, I was also going to bring up Joshi Damaro, everyone's favorite um, Silver Fox. He made a couple of announcements <laughs> the other day, right before Universal changed everything. Yes, we got the Harmonious announcement, we got or in the Happy Labor After announcement, but uh, he also announced some of the backslides that Disney's doing, the good backslides that everyone loves, like uh, overnight self-parking. You no longer will have to pay for that if you're staying overnight at a Disney Resort hotel. So it used to be you'd pay to park at your hotel on top of all the other fees you're paying, and uh, but now... Now that's no longer a case. So you can rest easy that you won't have to spend, I don't know how much it was, but I'm going to ballpark $25 to stay at a hotel. Yep, probably. Yeah, Belly, you're right. It, it, yeah, it's more. But <laughs> that's nice. Apparently, it's an Iger thing. Uh, fun fact. Well, I don't know if it's a fact, but that's what I've heard. You know, that's good that they're rolling it back. And another announcement that he made was that you will not have to do the park reservation for uh, after 2 p.m. if you're a pass holder. So if you're a pass holder, you can just show up at, after 2 p.m. Except in Magic Kingdom, they're keeping it there for a few more months. Like in a couple of months, they're going to instate this. Magic Kingdom is going to stay the same for a little bit longer, probably because Tron is opening up and Happily Ever After is coming back. So they want that park to be more restricted. Whereas like Animal Kingdom doesn't have a lot going on for it right now. And Epcot... Moana's coming, Cosmic Rewind is kind of, I mean, it's still big, but it's not what it was, you know, and Hollywood Studios is kind of also experienced the same thing as Epcot, where it's, or, yeah, Epcot, where it's big changes have kind of passed, and Animal Kingdom, you know, if you liked Avatar, you'll go back to it. Um, but that's nice that the park reservations are being pulled back. I think it's going to be really nice for locals, especially, like, for Epcot or like somewhere where you're going to like go get some food if a festival is going on like go get some food and drinks and stuff so I definitely think that's a good idea honestly financially as well for Disney to like take that um because it encourages people to be pass holders first of all that are more local and then it also um like I mean it's a perk you know like that's good we don't get a lot of them nowadays so that's nice um and as much as I probably won't be using that a lot because like you know, we usually go over early and spend the day there because we're about an hour and a half away from the area. It's just like a cool thing to do. And ultimately, I think it's going to end up with more money in their pocket because more people will hopefully become pass holders. And then also more people are going to spend money on like food and merchandise because they can just show up, which is really cool. Yeah, I actually have a correction to make. It's not Magic Kingdom's not totally blocked off. Only on Saturdays and Sundays can you not just show up to Magic Kingdom after two. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. That does. Make I'm sense. not mad about it. Nope. So those, I think it's Pixie Dust Pass holders. They really get a real perk because they're not even going to be missing at your kingdom on Saturday and Sunday to begin with. So they really can just show up outside of blockout days. Those are still um, in effect. Um, but I love that when Demaro made these announcements, if you're like, "Yeah, Iger, you've done it," he said, "Hold on, guys, wait a second hold on hold on my name is josh tomorrow you might know me you might love me and um i have integrity as well and i have initiative that's why that's why i'm me so i mean everyone loves Iger. i love Iger. <laughs> but it's not just because of him his actual quote although i'm pretty sure he said that behind the scenes uh his front-facing quote was this is not necessarily about a change in leadership I talk to guests. I have a lot of face-to-face -face conversations with guests when I'm walking the parks and I read a lot of their comments online so that means he sees what you post about him. The good, the Honestly, bad. Honestly, the... good. Hunka he sees hunka. the good. thirst traps. He can see all my thirst traps about him. He can see all the <laughs> thirst tweets. He can see it all. I love you, um, Josh Demaro. I was almost—I was going to say Bob Iger, which is also true. That also stands. I love you too. I don't think he gets as many thirst traps as Josh Demaro. <laughs> but, you know, listen, I think it's funny that he made like comments where he's like, hey, guys. Stop talking about him. Look at me. I think that's hilarious. <laughs> he, he I think is... his thirst trap count kind of drops, so he had to bring it back up and say, I'm responsible. <laughs> Everyone loves a responsible man. <laughs> so the point yeah. is, he's looking at the thirst traps. You can still make them. Just post them on your burner accounts. <laughs> and Universal sees the thirst traps, too, because they're asking about your... um. Oh, shall we say your your hunka hunka interest? 
and certain IP in that that survey that oh. went viral. I don't know if we want to get into that, but just that survey, like Adam said, the the local people they're looking into where people are finding these surveys and these weird answers and questions. But what they really should be looking into is where are the background singers? So <laughs> Universal Mardi Gras announced our concerts. Um, the most important, in my opinion, is Miss Patti LaBelle. Miss Where Are My Background Singers. And if you don't know what we're talking about, you have to look it up. Um, but I'm going to pull up the list right now. And I think it's good. I don't know why people are complaining because I like it. But that's just me. We have Patti LaBelle. We have Jake. Well, J-V-K-E. You know, the one that's like, golden that. that one. Um, Goo Goo Dolls. Don't know who that is. Maren Morris. I saw her. Sorry, Adam. <laughs> you made a face dolls. at me. Come on, Bella. I mean, I'm I haven't sorry. listened to them, but I've heard of them. I'm young. Sorry, sorry. I didn't I didn't want to interrupt. Sorry. No, you're good. You're good. Um, Maren Morris, who I've seen open for Nile Horn one. She's very good. We have Willow, which is Will Smith's daughter. So slay. Whip my hair back and forth. Period. Um, three doors down. Don't know who that is. Um, Sean Paul. Don't really know who that is. We don't know and Kryptonite then- and Temperature. Get out of here. Maybe. <laughs> I got the right to buy something from the no. store. That's that is a great. Oh wait, Andrew. wait, oh, no, 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 yes, the, the yes. Oh. Okay, yeah, okay, Paul. I knew that. And then, and then three doors then... down is the if I go crazy, then will you still call me Superman? Oh, no. that was a beautiful cover, Kelly. Everyone applaud. Thank you. Put in the clap track. <laughs> <laughs> and then closing out Mardi Gras, which with a really short concert lineup, I think, is two-time Grammy Award winner Lauren Daigle, my queen. I'm excited. I'm just really excited for Patti LaBelle, honestly. Last year was Diana Ross, which was amazing. And this year, if Where My Background Singers is not mentioned once, I know it won't be mentioned, but I will be mentioning it. Um, I'm gonna dress up like that video. I'm gonna dress up like what she's wearing, and I'm gonna make a sign that says "Why my background singers." Um, That's it's iconic. gonna happen because I love that video. But I don't know. I'm excited. Is everyone else excited, or is it just me? I'm very excited. I really. I know that Three Doors Down they've been doing for a few years, and I've seen them before actually at Universal Mardi Gras, and I like Three Doors Down. Um, but Patty Labelle I think is the most interesting and fun one on the list. There's a lot of like, I don't know. Universal does a good job. I'm interested by Willow, honestly, too. I would love to see Willow. So, yeah, great stuff going on here. Just like, you know, a good lineup. I'm just sad Jason Derulo isn't coming back because I <gasps> had the greatest time. Or Pitbull. Why can't they get Pitbull back? Or like yeah. Khalid. Like, <laughs> they should get Harry Styles on here. Oh, I would. That cry. won't happen. I had a dream no. about that happening. <laughs> I had a dream Taylor about that. Taylor Swift at Mardi Gras when? <laughs> Imagine. No, I had a dream about Harry Styles and he was going to be at Mardi Gras. And I got to Universal at like six in the morning so I could be first in like the security so I could get there first. And I literally sat outside there the entire day and I was front and center and I got to give him a high five. So. I think I might be manifesting things. Harry That's Styles, Universal Mardi Gras, 2024. That would be great. Jason Derulo is one of my favorite concerts I've ever seen there. He's so much fun. And he brought someone on stage for one of the songs. And it was just like a really cool, fun time. And I didn't realize like how many Jason Derulo songs I've heard and like. So yeah, it was fun. Yeah, this is going to be my year of doing new things at theme parks, I think. Like things I don't know. Because I know I have a lot of blind spots at Universal still. Um, like never done Ollivanders, haven't done a good number of shows. I can't remember the last time I saw Animal Actors. Um, and there are things on rides I'm sure I haven't done backstage, you know. So, but Mardi Gras is like the biggest blind spot I have because the most I've ever done for Mardi Gras was the um, what's it called, the tribute store. That's like the only experience I've ever had Mardi Gras related. I've not seen the parade, never seen a concert. So this year. This is what Adam Johnson is doing. Adam Johnson is going to go see Golden Hour Jake. Golden Hour. Uh, maybe see Oh, my mic was unmuted. I thought I was muted. <laughs> <laughs> I love that for you. That's what. That's great. So sorry. No, you're good. You're good. Um, 
So yeah, I'm excited to actually get my first Universal Mardi Gras experience. I think it's going to be fun. Never saw anything on the Universal Plaza stage except for like Horror Night trailers and wait times. So it'll be cool to actually see it for what it's made for. <laughs> Speaking of animal actors real quick, did you guys see that the macaw escaped? And they found him at the Lexus dealership of Orlando. Shut up. I did not see that. It's really funny. And I just needed to mention it because I think it's the most hilarious thing. I love it. (laughs) He was just trying to buy a new car, you guys. That's the most important news we've talked about all day. Forget Um, trauma and forget halfway over after. It's macaw. (laughs) Adam, you're going to love Mardi Gras. I have gone for my birthday many times because my birthday is in early March Pisces girlies, what up, hey, Bella? Um, <laughs> but I went last year for my birthday, which was super fun as an adult. I went for my birthday a lot as a kid. It's just fun. You get to catch boobs. Oh, I'm turning 21 during this Mardi Gras season. Yeah. That means Ooh. blinky cups are on the horizon. Get you a hurricane, girl. Oh, I'm going to. In Fat Tuesdays, it's Fat already. Tuesdays. That's exactly what's going to happen. It's going to happen. Oh, it's it's so fun when you can drink. Yeah, well, Mardi Gras is the best. It's a really fun time. Um, wrapping up here, I just want to talk about a couple quick things related to the holidays. Bush Gardens is going to be doing Mardi Gras this year, which is really exciting. Definitely check out their website. I feel like they could do a fun job of like having a lot of food booths. They have some very classic looking stuff on here. They've got hurricanes. I like that they have a throw me some beads punch. I think that's a very fun name. Um, you know, Po Boys, Etouffee, Gumbo, Shrimp Creole, Pim's Cups, and of course they have beignets. Um, so just like classic food items. And it looks like they've got all kinds of fun stuff going around there. Um, so yeah, and the food and beverage samplers are always fun at Bush Gardens. So definitely check that out if you like Bush Gardens. Honestly, it might be enough to get me to get a pass or a fun card again this year. And then really quick as well, Sir Henry's Valentine's event tickets are on sale. We are a lover of Sir Henry's in this household. We love them. Great event. Definitely check them out. Local haunts. Um, If you're in Tampa or Orlando areas, they're probably about an hour or so from you and it's worth the drive. Um, You can do it in a couple hours. It's great. And their trails are fun. And I've been to the previous Valentine's day events and they, it's such a cool event and it's called love's revenge check it out. There's going to be two trails and probably all kinds of other fun to be had. But yeah, that's about it for news, you guys. Slay. There's so many things that happened, but no, those are all the big ones. I'm very excited to see how it all turns out because some of these aren't going to happen for some time, um, like those universal announcements, mm-hmm. but I'm excited to see what it does for regional parks. Like Universal Regional Parks is a big thing and Disney really hasn't really done that. So it's going to see, it's going to be interesting and fun to see how Universal paves the way for that. And of course, these upcoming things like Mardi Gras, Bush and Universal and and uh, other things we talked about, uh, see how Tiana turns out next year. Uh, I'm, I'm, it's, it's a good, it's a good 2023 kickoff. It's a good kickoff, news kickoff season for, mm-hmm. for the parks. So I can't wait. If you want your Mardi Gras fix now, Bush Gardens actually just started Mardi Gras very early. Just watched Ooh. Tim Tracker, mention number two. His video today was at Mardi Gras and showed a little bit of the parade, some of the food, and everything looks really good. So if you're, uh, what's the word, impatient for Universal Mardi Gras to start, head on over to Bush Gardens if you can and go partake. It's me. I'm impatient. <laughs> it's me. Hi. I'm impatient. It's me. It's Kelly. <laughs> it is Kelly. All right. Well, that was super fun, you guys. Um, lots of other news to be had. If there's anything we missed, you can always let us know on the Twitter. Um, if you don't have Twitter, we also have an email, tpwquestions at gmail.com. And then you can also find one of us. I am on Instagram as Kelly with an EY, D Hoffman. And then I am also on the Twitter at killer underscore Kells with an S. Um, Adam, where can the people find you? You can find me on Twitter at Adam J underscore film. I should probably change that because how often do I talk about film these days? I have a theme park podcast, but it's Adam J underscore film on Twitter. Hit me up. And Bella, where can the people find you? You can find me over on Instagram at Flynn Writers Nose, and then on Twitter at Bella Harvey with two Y's at the end. 
And don't forget our Patreon. Uh, that's www.patreon.com slash theme park workshop. Thank you again to our patrons, Lana Kenoki and Jonathan Edward. We appreciate your patronage. Go join. We do bonus content there. I think that's pretty great. But if you just want to support us, you can too. For only a buck. Or more. Oh, we got we got those new tiers and we are going to go make some new content for you now or we're going to have some more fun conversations about what's to come in 2023 so go check us out over there we appreciate all of you um even if you're just a listener just coming to hang out with us we love that too so thanks for hanging with us if you got something to say we always love to hear from you we love our supporters and i hope y'all have a great night or day bye everyone Bye. Bye. <laughs> Have a good evening or day or afternoon. <laughs> <laughs>